getting started with my travels, I wanted to show a very important part of what I do before each day while in European summer. I take my skincare quite seriously as having experience in the skin industry, there is many factors to help us age gracefully. Hi all, welcome back. So I am going to show you some of the most useful tips to carry with you when you're on holiday. So I'm in Greece at the moment and the sun is consistent, it's always sunny and to protect your skin at the utmost uh, there's a few things that you can do to make your SPS last all day and layering is also a really good technique. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I achieve those results. First what I'm going to do is just start by cleansing my skin. So I just woke up and sorry if my voice is a bit croaky. <laughs> I haven't had a coffee yet but I am well rested. It was a long kind of a day yesterday and I was so tired when I got to bed last night. So I am full of energy this morning. So I'm going to cleanse my skin and I'm just using this face gym cleanser. It's called Electrolyte. And it is a nice gel foaming cleanser, works really well on the skin. I'm also using it with this Foreo. I love this because the technology of these bristles really works well on deeply cleansing the skin. So I just like to pour a little bit of water and then I will just pop that directly on. Now because it's the morning I've already cleansed my skin at night so I don't feel like I need to give it a good thorough cleanse. But it's always just nice to take off the debris as well. So this has eight settings and you can see my skin's already getting quite red and I'm just going in circular motions really quickly. And get the neck. Oh my gosh, I'm getting quite red actually. Okay, so that's done. I'm just going to quickly rinse it off. our skin I'm just going to put a little bit of Royal Fern moisturizer now this is an anti-aging cream I think it's specifically for the eyes but it works really well all over the face <laughs> and they give you quite a large pot so I just pop a little bit of this on and I will just wipe it across the face and get under the eyelids And typically before applying your SPF you would wait like a minute for your moisturizer to absorb into the skin and that is really good because you are not disturbing any of the ingredients in the moisturizer and you're also not disturbing anything in the sunscreen as well because they are quite different things they do completely different targeted results so you do need to make sure that you are giving them their own time. I have this um, sunscreen which I'm going to use it's a hundred percent SPF now I'm not too sure on the accuracy of a hundred percent I have never really seen a hundred SPF I think 50 is fine uh, but this one is supposed to be really good for uh, acne keratosis um, and non-melanoma skin cancer so it is very good probably for fairer skin types or people who freckle easily and what i'm doing with this is just working by sections because sunscreen you do need a lot now i don't measure out a teaspoon or anything like that i just put a large amount per section of the face and then i rub that in until it is absorbed I break down all the sections. I'm going to pop a little bit more for the forehead. And make sure when you are popping on the sunscreen, you're really getting underneath the eyes and above the brows as well. Because although we wear sunglasses, the UV rays can bounce in all different directions and they can go through the sides of the sunglasses so you just want to be completely protected it's for your own benefit it is honestly one of the best things you can do for anti-aging in the skin so I do take it quite uh, seriously 
because I don't want to have to be fighting all these things later on in life. So I find that that's a lot better. Now I have this uh, Helio Care Brown. Um, it's called Gel Cream Brown and it is a dark color for me, but I can't, currently I'm holding a spray tan on my body. And I've done a spray tan because whenever I go on a tropical holiday, instead of sitting in the sun, I will prefer to just tan before I go. And then anything that I kind of collect um, unconsciously, uh, just by you know walking out and about is just going to be natural it's not me trying to get a tan so I'm already satisfied having a bit more of a bronzed complexion before I go but this one works really well when I am bronzed so just wait for the previous sunscreen to completely absorb into the skin and what you're going to do with this one is just dab it over and it's going to work more as a uh, tint so rather than putting on way too much of this and making my face look like I have, you know, a thousand layers of greasy makeup, I prefer to put on a clear SPF and then just finish off the coloring with a little bit of a darker tinted sunscreen. And it works really well for me. Just do the same thing kind of blending it in but I don't use as much because I have pretty much got the full result from an SPF with the previous sunscreen. For the body I like to use this Bondi Sands pure um, it's kind of like a pure gradual tan and this one works really well for preserving the tan because you do have to keep your tans moisturized so I will use this one every night, but it's in the morning, so I'll pop a little bit on the chest area where I'll be, um, I find that more problematic here. So you just apply this one, it's like a very thick kind of a moisturizer. And this one will really take your tan right through. Even if you're not wearing a fake tan, you can use this one on your holiday. It's not going to look streaky or anything like that because it's very, very small pigments that they deposit over time. So it's better if you just use this one for a few days in a row and you will get those really nice glowy results. But I think that is good to go. Now, if you wanted to wear a little bit of makeup, what I would suggest would completely wait until all of your moisturizers are absorbed into the skin. And then I just grab a tiny little bit of, I'm using this Max Factor concealer and I'm just applying it very sparingly. Not too serious because it is gonna be really hot outside and I don't wanna look like I've gotten dressed up for the for the nights to have it all sweat off. So I just dab with my fingertips to blend it in. And then to set everything, I just have my Too Faced powder with a big fluffy brush and just very lightingly patting it over the sunscreen areas. The reason why you don't want to buff anything in is because you can stir, disturb the SPF underneath and this can um, alter the effect of the protection that you have. So it's best to just very, use very light patting motions. And for blush today, I'm feeling quite minimal. So I'm just gonna use this lipstick and just dab it onto the apples of the cheeks, a little bit on the nose. And this is just gonna give you a bit more of a fresher look. And lastly, I'm just bumping up the eyelashes with this curler just a couple of times. Usually when you go to bed and you sleep on your eyelashes and you toss and you turn, they can be quite sad looking. So a bit of mascara on there. This is a new waterproof mascara that I picked up. I've heard that waterproof is supposed to hold the lashes a lot better. I'm only putting the smallest amount because when it's hot, I tend to touch my eyes a lot. There we go, all done. I'm gonna remove my bonnet <laughs> and I will see you out in Greece. For this series, I'm splitting my trip into a few parts. 
This first part of the trip is going to show details of my sailing experience around the Saronic Islands, south of Athens. There are a total of six areas that we visited by sail and for most of the nights we stayed on the boat. This was the map guideline that was originally set for the seven days of our trip, but we ended up changing the order of the islands we visited as it depended on the wind controlling the waters. First stop was this small island. It had buildings built alongside the hill and there were docks full of working donkeys and tourist shops for dining. It was great to take in the fresh air and to see a little bit of the Greek culture on our first stop. Because it was getting later in the day, we only had enough time for a quick stop before setting for another island and docking for the night. day I decided to hop on deck and have a read of my book to really just get into a relaxed mode. Holidays are the best spent relaxing and not doing too much. This book I bought was called Pandora's Jar and it was a very interesting challenge of the goddess roles of the tales of Greek mythology. I later wanted to have a go at raising the sails because I noticed it was quite windy so I asked our skipper if the wind was in our favour of pushing the boat in the direction. He said that we could raise them as it was so I gave tightening the ropes a shot. I don't know if I did too much to help but it was really nice to have the sails up on the boat. We arrived at Spectus for the day and had a little look around at the shops and the wildlife. One thing I noticed about the area was that it was really well spread out and there was lots of tourist shops and places to eat. I walked past this man washing his horse and I thought it was so beautiful. The horse looks so well looked after and loved.
at the beautiful Spetters Beach. The sun is just so warm and I really do appreciate finding a beach that is kind of secluded. This beach is really nice because it was just about a 10 minute walk down and there's nobody here. It's just literally one other person here and I pretty much got the beach to myself so I'm really happy about that. The food here has been really good. I haven't had any bad food. I think it's hard to kind of find bad food when you come to Greece. One, they're very generous with the portion servings. And two, it's just made with love every single time. So everywhere you go, you can see how much effort they put into the service and the quality of the food. So anyway, I'm going to sit here for a little while and pop some more sunscreen on and I'll catch in a bit later with you at dinner time. As dusk was coming upon us, it was time to have lunch with some friends. The restaurant had great reviews. It was about a 15 minute walk from the city centre, but well worth the walk. popular foods that were on the menu to order were a Greek salad to share, some fresh fish and especially on the island, mussels, spanakopita and the dish that I was craving was a seafood spaghetti. Oh yes, that's mine. Thank you. Oh. Ah, yes. The service was great and we even had our way to debone our fish for us. After dinner we took downtown to explore some late night shopping. This was the place to find beachwear, uh, missing hats and of course lots of street cuts. This is for Tim. Tim come here. Oh it has a little sparkly thing even. <laughs> Looks like okay. hi. The souvenirs in this place were in abundance and you'd be sure to find something for someone. After the shop it was time for a little dessert. For watching this part of the holiday travels please give this video a little like if you enjoyed and I'll see you in part two